James? Have you lost weight? Yes, that's good. I like that. <laughs> what we're going to see today is for click, big data is just data. We're going to see how we're executing our, against our vision of leaving data where it is, looking at uh, two techniques. The first one, you can do in the product today, on-demand app generation, which is like precision fishing within your vast data lake. The next is our net new product offering this year, the associative big data index, which is like turning the data lake green. And so, our story begins. Here we have a freely available data set, New York taxi data, over a billion fares stored in the data lake. This application is just an aggregated view of that data. We have left the majority of data where it is. So let's do some analysis. I'm interested in negotiated fares. I'm interested in cash deals. We've gone down from a billion to 325,000 rows. Down the bottom, we can see a spike. Let's have a look at this spike. So we've got a huge amount of fares increasing in New York. It looks like over the summer. We've gone down from a billion to 57,000. But let's go further. Let's drill down to that spike. We can select a pre-built selection. And we can see 27th and 28th of August, 2011, we had a spike. What could be causing that? Have a think. We're down to just 2,000 fares, a billion to 2,000. But we can go further. We don't have to load all of the data. We have access to all of that data. Down the bottom left here, our governed limit has been reached. And I can now go fishing. So let me get this straight. What you've done is you've built basically an overview app, a top level picture of your lake. And through your analysis, you needed to go into the lake, to go fishing into the lake, to pull some data out to do a deeper level analysis using on-demand application generation. That's exactly right. We've used the power of the underlying data source, in this case, Google BigQuery, with the awesome power of the click associative engine and combine that data in memory. Here we have a geographical representation of those taxi fares. Down the bottom right, we can see down to the second the individual fares that have been executed. And at the top, we can see the sporadic nature of the amount of fares over time. Remember, we're trying to figure out what that spike was all about. So let's go further and isolate down to those two there, to those two particular days. We're down to 80 fares now, a billion to 80. But again, we can go fishing. I can now drill down to individual routes and launch into the routes themselves. And here we have a geographical representation of those individual routes. If I just close that down, we can see we have an extremely long route here. So I isolate down to that. I've gone down from a billion to a single fare in a matter of seconds. However, this fare is nearly 60 miles and no tip. <laughs> I wonder why. Why could that be? Here, bright red, trip distance, 59.3. Next to that trip distance, the shortest distance, 57.3, using our geometrics connector. So any New York cab drivers in the audience, here's a bit of free advice from me. If you want to get a tip, don't go the long way around. <laughs> but let's get back to our story. So this time we'll go behind the scenes to figure out why we have that spike. I can take my governed layer and I can convert it into self-service. Remember, we started with big data, a billion rows. I'm now going to do my own self-service on that big data. I can add in some additional data to that. So New York has got an interesting climate, unlike the UK, where it's either raining or about to rain. <laughs> or just finished raining. Or just finished raining. I can't. Yeah. So, let's add in this weather. This contains things like average wind speed, temperature, 
rainfall. On the right hand side, one of Josh's favorite things, along with entry passwords. We can see here, we can add in that information, and we can load that data and consume that into our data model. And we can jump into our sheet to try and figure out what that spike was. So let's give ourselves a little bit of real estate. On the left, we'll add in that weather data. I'll bring in wind speed. Another one of Josh's favorite things, the cognitive engine. It's understood the best way to represent that wind speed metric is not a sum, but an average. So nothing unusual there. 15 miles an hour in August in Manhattan. But let's add in those dates and those times. We drag it on, engine kicks in again, gives us a line chart. Now we can see something interesting. Let's open this up. We can see between the 27th and 28th of August 2011, the average wind speed went from 15 to nearly 50 miles an hour. So the reason we had a spike, Hurricane Irene hit the East Coast on the 28th, and everybody was getting off the island on the 27th. Hence, the huge amount of cap fares. So let me get this straight. So you started with an overview app of an entire lake, taxi fares. You were able to navigate down to the data you needed using on-demand application generation. Then you were able to mash in, mash up additional weather data in order to figure out why the taxi fares went up. It's just data point. It's just data. Well done. So, we have seen what we can do today, right now, with on-demand app generation. How can we allow you to extend on that investment? Just imagine, just think, we could turn the data lake green, introducing the associative big data index. On the top left, we can see the modes that Mike talked about earlier in memory and script. We're going to focus down on the live mode. This is a live window to that governed performance index in your data lake. We're not loading that data into memory. It's a live view. We're also going to see how that works in combination with on-demand app generation. So you may have already invested in an on-demand solution. We are not going to throw that away. We're going to continue on the investment for that and allow you to do it to create a slice of in-memory data from that governed performance index. So we have over 500 gigabytes of data, over 5 billion rows in the data lake using the TPCH data set, which some of you may be familiar with. Down the bottom here, powered by QSL, not SQL. QSL, click selection language, is one of our patents we've developed as part of the product offering. QSL is a highly performant selection state, not more SQL to the data lake. So Nobody else does it this way. It's very important to understand. Nobody does it this way. So let's take a look in the lake. Proof, lake. <laughs> That's a beautiful Streaming data too. No smoke and rose here. At the top, we've got the information we're interested in. Line items, orders, customers, parts. Down the bottom, we've got the actual data filters themselves that we can select from. So let's pick some information around customer. That's our metadata, that's our selection. And now, let's look live into that governed performance layer in the lake. And let me pick six customer keys. OK, so what's happening right now? We're querying the lake directly without moving any data into memory. We're just accessing it through the big data index and leaving data where it is. That's correct, Mike. Wow. Wow. <laughs> So for this, these six customers, we can see that those six customers have not bought furniture. That's taking the power of the associations. That's something that is unique in the industry. Nobody can do that with such speed, such performance, and such agility. In fact, I've selected six customers from a single filter box containing 750 million distinct customer IDs in the blink of an eye. We've taken the associations from the UI 
to the data. We can go further. I mentioned on-demand earlier. Down the bottom left, we've got our on-demand link ready to go. I'll generate a new app. Remember, QSL, not SQL. And we can see the speed that we're getting. I've interacted with the full five billion. And there is my in-memory app I can start doing analysis on. And we can launch into that. So we're using QSL to do data extraction through the index, rather than emitting SQL directly against the link. <coughs> and here we can do a basic analysis looking at those customers that we brought in. But we can go a little further. Because we've got that government performance index, I can add in additional columns from the orders and from the line items. And again, I can augment my in-memory application. We're now live, we're gonna augment our in-memory app. So I can now open up my regeneration capability. And again, QSL, not SQL. And if we jump back to our in-memory app, almost within the blink of an eye, if you blink that quickly, we blink twice, sorry. We can see the additional data items appear because the data's already been governed. And finally, we can finish off with a governed chart that we had ready to go as part of the analysis looking at customer splits. So we've seen what you can do today with on-demand app generation. We've seen a glimpse into the near future with our associative big data index. Mike, thanks Ian. Awesome stuff. So what Ian showed you in that demo is a game changer. Because big data index in this scenario is acting like a governance layer, an entire army of application developers have a consistent view and sub-second responses in terms of pulling data out of that lake for their use cases. So we call it a big data index, but we've been toying with the idea of just calling it the data index. But we see it as a tier one offering for your data strategy to redefine how you do analytics across your organization. I said before, we developed to work in the cloud and the on-premise across multiple cloud providers leaving data where it is, fitting into our multi-cloud strategy. And most importantly, we maintained a click-like experience, a click-associative experience for all users, regardless of skill level, from the UI all the way down to the lowest level. <coughs> so like data, people are also...